and, and kind of walk through what we're going to be doing in the demo here. So I've got an assembly, and as you can see here, there is an interference. There was an error made somewhere along the line, and there's a problem with this assembly, and we need to make a change. And what we're going to be doing is, is making a change to this particular assembly. And you can see here, if I, if I do some dimensions, I'm just going to find out what, does the, what is the distance that I need to create for this particular file. So so we'll just do a dimension from here, and we'll just take a dimension from that point. And you can see I pulled off a dimension that's about 281. That's going to come into play a little longer. Um, I want to know what the current size of this plate is. So I'm just going to pull off a dimension here. And I can see that that dimension's about 460 millimeters. So I know I've got a plate, and I know it's about 460 millimeters. So I don't know where it is in the vault. And we're going to show you how to find that information very quickly. So that 460 millimeter dimension is going to come into play here in a minute. Let me just show you some other things here. Um, with We're viewing the, the DWF of this assembly. So I'm not viewing the inventor file. I'm viewing a lightweight format of the inventor file that allows me to do different tasks. If I wanted to send this to a vendor, I can send them the DWF file, and they would be able to view that in designer view whatever, without ever having to have CAD. Maybe they don't have AutoCAD or can't afford to buy inventor. You can collaborate with those individuals with designer view, and that's really a free mechanism to create that collaboration. So I know that I've got a plate, and it's about 460 millimeters. So what I want to do is I want to go into my vault, and I want to find something. Uh, we had talked about eye properties a second ago in that terminology sheet. And I know that the description contains plate. I don't exactly know what plate, support plate, whatever. And I'm just going to do a find. Well, I have a smaller vault. Some companies obviously have large vaults. And this could come back with 1,000 hits. And a lot of times, you know, I don't want to sit here and look at or evaluate what all these files are. Now, I can right-click, and I can view each one of these files. Well, if I had a list of 1,000, this could take me some time to try to find that information. So what I want to do, and this is, can only be done with Autodesk Vault, is I've actually put in the height of that plate, and that becomes searchable. And you remember earlier, I put in 460 millimeters. I want to find a plate that's greater than 460 millimeters. And when I do that, only one file comes up. Other DM applications that integrate with Inventor cannot do this. They cannot index the I properties, and they definitely can't index the dimensions. If you've used Inventor, you have the ability to export those dimensions into the vault so that they're searchable. Um, we used, I come from an industry where we had a lot of pulleys. And our pulleys were multiple lengths, and we had thousands of them. Well, to make our database more intelligent, we exported the height of those pulleys so that you can search on that criteria. So that's just one piece of information that you can place into your vault to make it more intelligent and ultimately help out the end user find data a lot quicker. Once I found that file, I can save this search. You know, Maybe this is something I do over and over again. Or if I want to, I can go find that very easily. I just right click and say go to folder. And in the background, you'll see it kind of flicker around. And now it's taken me to that part. And I'm happy. I'm just going to close the find command. So you can see here that I've got kind of my version history of this document. And if I want to look at it, I can click on the preview pane. And it'll show me very quickly what that file looks like. And again, if I wanted to pull off some measurements, I would be able to do that. If I wanted to, to find out more information, all that can be done through these other tabs. So maybe I want to know where this particular file is used. Is it used in one assembly? Is it used in 20? Whatever. If I'm making a change, if I make a change to this plate, what am I affecting? So I very easily can see all the relationships that are happening with that assembly and that part. It also shows me the drawings. So are there any drawings related to this particular part as well? And very quickly, if I wanted to do a checkout or an edit, I'd be able to do that through the right mouse button. Um, we're just going to take a look at the assembly it's used in just to make sure one more time 
that I actually have the correct part. So once it renders here, I'll just make this a little bigger. And you can see I've got that plate, and I have all the components that are part of that assembly. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to duplicate this assembly, but we're going to copy the plate, the wire harness, and the assembly itself through a, a out-of-the-box wizard that's available inside Vault called Copy Design. So let me show you how that works. So I want to copy this design. Again, I don't have to go to that assembly or find that assembly. I can just simply right click. I go to copy design. And what the vault's going to do is it's going to go out and look for all the relationships of those files for that particular assembly. And something that's new inside of 2010 is it also brings in the documentation that's associated to the children of this assembly. So you can see I've got some drawings out there for these other parts. I'm just going to clean up the interface a little bit because we don't need to see all the parts. And what I want to show you here is the copying that's occurring up here at the top. You can see that these icons are blue, and it may be small. But over here on the right-hand side, I can see that I'm currently copying this data. If I want to copy other data, and this is the plate that we were referring to earlier, all I have to do is click on the plus sign, and now I'm making a copy of that. Now, if I had a, another plate already created, I can even go as far as replacing and grabbing another plate out of the vault and importing it into this configuration. So there's a lot of power that's built into the copy design tool that allows me to duplicate and reuse data very efficiently. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy the wire harness, since we're going to make a shorter wire harness for this particular assembly. And as I do the copies, the new file name um, pops up here and allows me to type in a new file name. Well, if I was in a prototype state, I may not know what that file name is. So maybe I just wanted to play around with it. Well, I can apply a prefix to that file if I wanted to. Um, I can also apply a suffix. Maybe I just want to call this prototype. Um, I can even go as far as applying both of them so I've got the prefix in the front and the suffix in the back. So there's a lot of configuration op options you can do on just the naming conventions alone. Um, on this particular scenario, what we're going to do is we're just going to give this a new part number. And I'm just arbitrarily going to make up something new here and type in some numbers. And one of the things you'll notice um, is I can just highlight the whole thing and type in the new number, and Vault automatically will give me the extension. I don't have to remember that. In previous versions, you had to kind of highlight just the part number and change that and leave the extension. You no longer have to do that. So what we'll do here is we'll give this a 700-501. And we'll, this last one we'll do 502. And now we've got our, our design created. Um, what's going to happen here is, is two things are going to happen. It's going to give me a new file name, and um, it's going to basically allow me to import that part number into the I properties as well so that I can very easily rename these parts and upload that information into the data very quickly. Uh, one more other option is I can choose where I want these files to go. If I'm duplicating this assembly, and I want to move it to a new project, I have the ability to do a global move, or I can individually move files down here to particular folders based on how you organize your data. Again, there's a, there's a lot of capability built into this wizard so that it can very quickly copy information to the correct location. So once I've got everything uh, set up the way I want, all I have to do is say OK. And it's going to go out and it's going to replicate that design for me. And all of this is currently happening on the Vault server. So it's, it's duplicating and replicating this information on the Vault server. And then I can bring it down to my machine when I want. So I just created a bunch of parts. And may, I may or may not know where they are. Well, to make life easy on me, I'm just going to search for them. I'm going to pick on the top level folder. I'm going to search for anything with the part number 700. And it went through the vault and showed me anything that met that criteria. 
So I showed you the advanced find earlier. We also have a very quick find that's built into Vault as well. And what I want to do here is I want to make some changes to this assembly. And I want, to, I want to change the name from tall to short. We're actually going to make a smaller clamp here. And to do that, I just highlight the files I want to rename. And I go up to what's called Edit Properties. And this is going to allow me to type in a new name for this. And I'm just going to make it simple on myself and call them short. 